I'm a big believer in short workouts if you can consistently commit to it. Yes, I do think you can get amazing results with quick workouts because you're going to consistently show up to it um, and that's going to, to give you the results. Hey friends, welcome to Keep It Simple Sexy. I'm Christine Bullock, founder of KO Body Care, certified fitness trainer, and mom of three little girls who's just trying to juggle it all and feel as good as possible, all while helping you do the same. I'm so grateful that you're here. Now let's get started, sexy. This episode is brought to you by KO Body Care, the leader in face-grade body care and supplements for total body wellness. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Keep It Simple Sexy. Happy New Year. I hope you guys had the best holidays. Happy New Year. And you're looking forward to thriving in this new year. Are you ready to commit to a new routine? You feel like maybe you're lacking even more time in 2023 than you had in past years? Me too. Well, enter Megan Roop, who wants you to commit to less exercise, but get the same results. Where do I sign up? Well, you can literally sign up on Megan's The Sculpt Society, and I bet you will fall in love instantly. TSS offers fun and effective workouts that combine sculpt and dance. Megan is like a modern day Jane Fonda with a slew of workouts ranging from dance cardio to strength, tone, and much, much more. The workouts range from 10 minutes sign me up, (laughs) to 50 minutes, and just one glance at her A-list celebrity following, you'll know TSS has proven results. She's on a mission to empower women through movement, and I'll add, while giving you the pop star-esque butt you've always wanted. Let's find out how we can do less and accomplish more with Megan Roop. Welcome to the show, Megan. Thank you. What an intro. (laughs) I get that a lot, you know? (laughs) I like to empower the guests as well. (laughs) I'm no, so I'm so here. excited to have you, and especially for the new year. Yes. Your program is amazing. Your attitude is amazing. She's a mommy of a one and almost half year old, you know, and you're just <laughs> doing your thing and helping everybody along as well in the process. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm juggling a lot, but I'm so happy to be doing what I'm doing. Um, I feel really aligned in my purpose um, and getting to work with women around the world to feel more confident in themselves. I love that. So let's, we always back up. Yeah. When did you get into fitness? How did you get into fitness? Yes. Um, honestly, it really began, I think, just from an early age of, of movement for me. You know, I, I grew up dancing. And so when I graduated from college, I mean, from high school, I was, I was, pursuing dance and really starting to think about um, fitness for the first time outside of, you know, my ballet class. And so my early memories of fitness probably aren't my fondest. I would spend hours in the gym, you know, on a treadmill or an elliptical, like hating every second, (laughs) counting every calorie I was burning. And it wasn't until I discovered um, dance-based fitness and started teaching that I really realized that movement could be joyful and fun. And I, for me, it was such a missing part of my journey of, of body confidence. And I think for me, once I discovered that, and once I was able to work with women and see the impact that that movement could also have on, on their lives, mm-hmm. I really wanted to create space and create um, the Sculpt Society. So I, I created the Sculpt Society in New York in 2017. And I really wanted to to create a boutique fitness class what that was for everyone you know i wanted it to be a warm welcoming experience i feel like boutique fitness can be really intimidating especially, especially in new york <laughs> especially in new york um and i wanted it to be a little more simplified i thought like dance cardio at the time was like very complicated unless you like had a dance background um, it's still complicated though too yeah. like, i don't want to have to think that hard <laughs> Totally. And so I wanted to just really create um, a class that was simplified, that was straight to the point, but that was also really fun, uplifting, and gave you a really effective uh, class in under an hour. And so it really was born out of wanting to empower women. 
And that was in person in New York. And then about a year and a half into the Sculpt Society, I was just witnessing digital fitness explode around me. You know, Peloton was was happening. And, and, you know, I really thought to myself, I would love to bring the Sculpt Society to life digitally because I also had so many clients in New York, you know, that would come and visit or models. A lot of my clients were are, are models and they would come and they would be traveling and wanted to still work out while they were traveling. And so um, I really... I thought, you know, why not? Let's try this. Um, I could create online content. And so in November of 2019, I launched the Sculpt Society app. Wow. How apropos to what then happened around the world at that time too. Yes. Um, And so, you know, how many, like, what were you doing when 2020 hit basically? Yeah. yeah, it was it was a wild time because, you know, I'd, I'd had what, maybe four months under almost five months of, of the Sculpt Society app. And it was still in its, its infancy. And we were still, you know, I felt so grateful because we already had such an amazing community um, that was supporting the Sculpt Society app. And I had already a library of content going and kind of I was getting into the groove of, you know, weekly content, you know, and creating that. And and so it was it was crazy when when really the world shut down and and I think you immediately I immediately pivoted so you know I remember I had a class scheduled I think on Sunday like I forget it was like maybe March thirteenth or something that's like literally the day before a Saturday everything shut down and I remember going live on my on my app the next day it was like my class no longer in New York was canceled so let's all join live on the on the app and wow join. you really pivoted that's amazing there was like yeah. no I'm gonna stay in bed and worry about this you're like let's just go <laughs> you know, I honestly felt that's like great. you know I had a duty especially you know weeks in right when we're like okay this is this is gonna be, we're gonna be like this for a while I felt such a duty to bring a sense of um, positivity and, and, uh, you know, for me, movement grounds me. So bringing that to, to everyone every day as a way that they could um, stay positive during a really stressful time for so many of us. So, you know, I went live seven days a week for the first nine months of, of COVID and it was, um, it was a lot, but it was so amazing because I would teach afterwards, we would have a coffee chat, we would connect the community. And so just having a place where all of us could come to and and be stronger together was was really amazing. And, and honestly, we still do that now. I still go live, we still have our coffee chats and my community is just such a positive place to be. And is that live on your platform or is it on social or sometimes a little bit of both? Most of the time it's on the Sculpt Society app. I'll, I'll go live on Instagram every once in a while, but um, mm-hmm. it, it's, on, it's on the Sculpt Society app, which is, which is great. So as it's built, what kind of workouts? I mean, I'm on there, I know, but for the viewers who don't know, what kind of workouts can they find on there? Yeah, so for me, it was really important. I think at home, it's really hard to you know, get in your traditional like 45 minute workout. And I, so for, for me, there's so much that you can do on the Sculpt Society app, everything from low impact sculpt, full body, no jumping to high intensity, high energy dance cardio. That's simplified. I really intentionally make my dance cardio, not overcomplicated. You're doing heel taps, jumping jacks. If you're not a dancer, I promise you, you would get it. And so everything, we even have yoga, we have meditation, um, and then it's really broken down into short workouts. So you can do everything from five, 10, 15, all the way up to 45 minutes. But, you know, I think it's really important to me to remember to my community that like, I would rather you commit to shorter amounts of workouts consistently throughout your week than do a one long workout um, a week. Because for me, that's like building that consistency habit that is building your, um, you're just your, your, your muscle, right. Of like, okay, every day I'm going to get in a little movement, even if it's 10 minutes. So I am a big fan of my quickies on the app. If it's 10 minutes a day and you can commit to that, you know, four or five, six days a week. Amazing. And that's exactly what we were saying in the intro. Cause I've heard you say it many times or read it in many articles committing to less so you can show up more. And, you know, what you're saying is that it's going to create that consistency within the many workouts in the sense of results do you feel like if you're doing 10 to 20 minute workouts, is it equivalent to 50 minute workouts or is there a specific program where you rotate it a little bit throughout your week that you recommend ultimately? 
I think the successful program is the one that you can commit to. And so for many of us, I would say for most of us, we can't consistently commit to doing 45 or even 30 minutes a day, five, six days a week. So for those of you who are listening, who are like, yeah, that's me, you know, maybe I, I do it for the month of January and then I'm done. I would so much rather, right? Like fitness is a journey. It's continuing and just, it's not the month of January and then you're done. It's showing up consistently to feel good in your body, to feel confident in your own skin, to feel grounded. So I think, yes, you can get so many powerful results in a short amount of time because to me, 10 minutes energetically shifts how you feel in your body, in your day. And that moves throughout your day, right? That moves into your Zoom call that you have with your boss, into the relationship you have with your partner or your kids. And so I'm a big believer in short workouts if you can consistently commit to it. And I have programs around my quick workouts. You can, I have, you know, quick, I've got the quickie program with no cardio. So all low impact full body sculpt, or if you want a little dance cardio, I've got a quickie program with sculpt and dance cardio. So really making sure that if someone comes onto the sculpt study app, there is a program for you that you can consistently show up to and commit to. So amazing. If that is your time frame. if you are someone that's like, yes, I know I can commit to 30 minutes then I have a program for you. So just making sure that I am there at every stage of your fitness journey, mm -hmm. pre postnatal, quickie workouts, 30 minute workouts. So going back to your question, yes, I do think you can get amazing results with quick workouts because you're going to consistently show up to it. Um, and that's going to, to give you the results. And the next thing is like your mommy too, like the quickie workouts you can do with your kid running around in pure chaos in 10 minutes too, you know, and just get it well, done absolutely. as well. Yeah. And I mean, there's kids, there's, there's something about, you know, dance cardio and sculpt kids loved. I love like love the, it. <laughs> the tags that I get of moms who are working out with me at home because the kids get involved too. They get excited. And then I also think you're showing your kids that you are putting yourself and your health first and that you have to fill yourself up to be a good mother and to be a good partner and to be a good employee all the things like it is so important that we are carving out time for ourselves because again that feeds into the rest of your life mm -hmm. and it's becoming a good role model for them i love that too my my husband we work from work out from home and work from home we basically just don't leave the house yes. for a limit of time that we have so we just get it all done but he hates you know he needs a like peace and quiet doesn't want anybody there, not even myself. Like I can't even utilize the works workout space as well. But I love it. I'm like, he's like, let me grab the kids if you're going to. And I'm like, no, just send them down. Like I don't mind if they're running around and doing all this stuff. And it interrupts the workout here and there just a little bit. You know, for me, it's even more enjoyable then. And exactly what you're saying, they get to see mommy taking that moment for themselves and having fun through fitness and being able to do it with them too, you know, even at yeah. two years old, she just sits on me, makes bridges harder, sit ups oh. harder, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Speaking of workouts, what are your pre and post workout? Like any recovery tips I should say, and any tips for just fueling yourself before a workout? Yeah, I'm a big intuitive eater. I'm also mm -hmm. a big intuitive movement person. So it's really important to me I'm not someone who is following a diet. I really am all about what does my body need? What am I craving? And so always trying to eat whole foods, not processed foods, but bringing back nutrition to a little bit more of like a simple place. Like, you know, is, is eggs and avocado, is that what I'm feel, feeling like today, you know, or do I need something a little heartier? Um, so I'm not like, okay, it's been 30 minutes since my workout. I need to get X, Y, and Z in. Um, I, I really am like asking myself um, from a very simple place, like, am I hungry? Am I full? Um, what is going to give me energy and fuel me? And so I think some go-to snacks that I love, um, I'm a big snacker. I love um, good culture cottage cheese and, and some blueberries. I love Ezekiel bread with avocado and eggs. Um, I love fruit and almond butter. Like those are all things I, I generally will, will gravitate to because they make me feel good. They're delicious. Um, protein, protein, fiber. Yeah. Up. Um, but I think just like fitness, you have to, everyone is so different. So what is making me feel good and energized may be different to you. And so just taking the time to explore that with yourself. 
but they're whole foods. You know, I think that is most important too. And even whether you're eating meat or not, you know, you're getting in not prepackaged stuff and crackers and all that kind of stuff constantly, you know? Say for recovery, I, Mm -hmm. I think things like even just getting outside and going for a walk with my husband, getting some vitamin D, um, making sure I'm getting enough sleep. I'm a big believer in sleep. I think most of us think that we don't need um, as much as we do. Mm-hmm. Um, in downtime, I love an infrared sauna, a massage. Um, I used to live in New York City, so I really miss my Chinatown massages that I would get all the time. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, if, when I need it, some acupuncture, but I don't think that your recovery routine needs to be as, or even just your wellness routine needs to be as complicated as, as we make it. I think it's just simple things in your day that are going to make you feel good. I agree. Like I just took a bigger breath when you said simplify your wellness routine. You know, it's just like taking those moments throughout the day too. I love the treatments. I love the self-care treatments, but sometimes we end up stressing more about getting all that kind of stuff in and that causes, um, you know, more effect to your longevity and your aging and all that kind of stuff than just going to sit in your bedroom by yourself for like five minutes, you know? There was a time where I was like, I need to meditate and journal and do all of these things before the day. And, and while yes, I love, I love a short meditation. I love journaling. And those are things I am striving to do more consistently. Sometimes the stress of like making sure you're doing all the things, <laughs> um, you know, like you said, is, is not worth it. So just simplifying it, asking yourself, what do you need today? In fact, we even have a section on the app called, what do you need today? Um, <laughs> Just to like get yourself thinking, like, what is it that you you need? Maybe it's a walk outside. Maybe it's just a, a five minute stretch and a breath, and that's what's gonna set you up. I love it. I mean, that's what we're all about. Keep it simple, sexy. So yeah. <laughs> simplifying it all. The Keep It Simple Sexy podcast is brought to you by Ko Body Care. By now, you guys know I'm all about simple wellness habits. And the most important habit, in my opinion, is eating lots of fruits and veggies to boost your immunity and feel energized and youthful. The only problem, if you're as busy as I am, you're probably eating a lot of meals on the run. So I'm going to fill you in on my favorite hack. KO Body Care's clean plant-based supplements. As the founder and CEO of KO Body Care, we spent so long getting these formulas perfect and our customers are just as obsessed with them as I am. Our best seller right now is our Vital Green Superfood Powder Drink Mix. Every scoop contains 25 superfoods that optimize your cellular health and performance. There's organic greens, antioxidant rich berries, curcumin and immune complex, and so much more. Unlike most green powders, this one doesn't taste like grass, guys. It's got a sweet berry flavor that even my kids love. Seriously, my oldest asks for it every day. Vital Green Superfood Powder is a staple in my pantry and in the KO collection. And when you try it, you'll know why. Order yours today at kobodycare.com and make sure to use your special code KISS20 for 20% off your first purchase. Well, speaking about nutrition, although it's not your expertise, but what I love is I've read how you talk, you've talked about body image before as, and as so many dancers, you had body image. I don't want to call it an issue, but you know, things going on in your twenties. And I know so many young girls that listen into this, but also I'm 40 women in their forties are still having these issues and haven't come to that realization. And honestly, I was a dancer, ballerina too. And so I went through all of that as well. And I was like a muscular ballerina, you know? And so I wasn't as frail and thin as some of these other girls. So when did you come to the realization and how did you come to the realization? And then how did you work through that process? Yeah. I, you know, I don't know that, Gosh, it's like a complicated time. I actually don't even think it was came from being a dancer and this idea that I needed to be thin to be a dancer. In fact, my my body image moments and honestly, my relationship with food actually came in my freshman year of college and honestly, probably a little bit towards the end of my senior year in high school because I was trying to decide what to do next mm-hmm. um, as far as my career went. And I actually, my freshman year of 
it's a whole, this is a whole other podcast, but I'll, I'll give you the, the elevator. <laughs> you, give us the dish. <laughs> you know, I, I, um, I ended up not pursuing dance in my freshman year of college. And so I think in my own subconscious way, in order to not deal with those feelings of leaving dance behind and being really sad that I wasn't pursuing what I thought I actually should be doing, um, I started to focus in on exercise and food and, and ended up just in this cycle of yo-yo dieting and binge eating and not having a healthy relationship with my body. And I, I don't think it was about being thin. It was actually about numbing subconsciously and not wanting to deal with what I had just, you know, the big decision I had just made about not pursuing. You're filling a spot too in your life because ballet is so, and dance is, you know, so regimented. And yeah, so- we, well, no, you end up having to regiment everything else, I think. You know, it's something that I've learned that I have to like let things go in life because of that dance background or athletic background in any way. Yeah. And again, I, I for me, I don't even know if it was, it, it was my background in dance. I mm -hmm. think it was because I was trying to numb what I was going through. And I think mm -hmm. it could be people could use alcohol or drugs or sex, to, whatever you're, you're using yeah. something to not have to focus on maybe the emotional um, decision or thing that's going on in your life. And so for me, it wasn't until I really understood that and then redirected my, my path. I ended up transferring and, and moving to New York um, to pursue dance, but I had, to, I, 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 ended up, I ended up having to then, you know, some of those behaviors still, you know, came with me in my time in my early twenties. It wasn't like, because I had under, you know, I was like, okay, I, I need to redirect. I'm going to pursue dance now that those behaviors suddenly switched. Um, so I, I had to do some real internal work, some belief system work, really like figuring out how I was talking to myself. And then again, like I said in the beginning, the, the missing component too was the movement aspect of just healing my relationship with food and movement. Um, and so that that took some time. Uh, I, I wish I could go back to my earlier younger self and and tell her I should have probably have been in therapy. Um, I feel like that probably would have sped up my my um, my healing process. And that, to be honest, I think most women on some level, you know, you're, the spectrum is large, but on some level have gone through um, a moment where they don't have a great relationship with their body or with food. And so it's important for me to talk about it because it can feel very lonely and isolating when you're going through it. But for me, the freedom on the other side of having done the internal work on healing those relationships is, is so amazing. And that's what I want to give to other women is, is this freedom of how can we feel joyful in our bodies and in movement? Because that when you've healed that with yourself mm -hmm. and you feel at home in your body, that is the, the most powerful feeling um, and so that's really so much of my why and what I'm doing. And, you know, one of your biggest missions is really empowering women. And I love that. And it probably comes from that, you know, yeah. having gone through that whole experience. But I agree because, you know, in fitness, it's like, you know, when I, I mean, I started, oh my God, I don't know how many years ago, but when we used to make DVDs, I make them for other people. They'd be like, you have to say your love handles or your skinny jeans or all that stuff, you yes. know? And I'm like, all right, I'd rather just say glutes, but okay. But yeah. you can see how sometimes, you know, some people are still doing that kind of stuff and really focusing in, or media is trying to still focus in on that stuff. And I think that amazing trainers like yourself are saying, no, like, it doesn't matter how you come to this. Everyone's beautiful. You're here for you, not yeah. for what you physically look like. Yes. Right. When you feel your best, you're going to look your best too. Yes. And just, you know, taking, I always talk about in my videos, taking the pressure off to, to be perfect in the mm -hmm. movement, right. Whatever stage you're at, whatever part of the journey you're at, like be at home now, because I think so much as humans, we're like, I'll be happy when. And so if we can really understand how to be happy now in our own bodies, um, that is so powerful. It's and so also, powerful. 
So powerful. And also just thinking too, I think what you said, there's so many triggering messaging in fitness. And so when I am talking to my community, it's, it's making sure that my words feel like mantras, right? Like you are strong, you're powerful, you know, um, like we're in this together, things that are going to, it starts to slowly integrate, you know, as the more you hear it, the more you can start to believe it and, and, and taking away some of those triggering messages from fitness to really feel like a place where you can feel safe and feel empowered to go to. Mm -hmm. I love your cues. And I also read an article too. Somebody was saying how, even though it was over the app that she was training with you, she felt like you were there with her because every time, you know, she wanted to take those moments or stop or whatever. She's like, it's like, she was talking straight (laughs) at me, but it's probably because you're using um, cues and verbiage like that, where it's just more supportive. It's not even like, make sure you're at a right angle and this, and yeah. though, um, you know, I know you use some of that just to describe what you need from it, but like you're, it's more like, okay, let's just do this yeah. together. You know, you're here for you yeah. right now. And I think too, you know, that's with like a, over a decade of teaching group fitness. Like yeah. I, know, <laughs> I know those moments in class and I'm physically doing the class with my clients too. So like, I know those moments, not only from the mm-hmm. class, from teaching, but also like in my own body, I'm like, Oh my God, this is like the second time my, my, my tush is hurt. Like whatever it is, like, yeah. you know, just speaking to those moments of like, yeah, this part is, this is going to be a challenging moment for all of us. We're in it together. Like we mm-hmm. can get through it. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, or like when you're, I can tell too, when people are zoning off, right? Like you're to do what you're like, cause you are too, <laughs> right? <laughs> Bring it back. Sometimes in. we are. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, we've taught five yeah. classes that day and it's like, whoo. <laughs> <Right? Yeah. laughs> well, speaking of body image too, you have a, a one and a half year old and, you know, I know that going through pregnancy myself, you know, I have three, my first adopted and I have my two little ones. And first time I went through my, you know, pregnancy with Penelope, I think I fell even more in love with my body. Like there's a fear, I think. Uh, being a fitness trainer and being in the public eye for bodies. And I feel like I just gave that all up suddenly. Like it was so freeing for me. Um, And I loved every little bit of body change that I went through. And especially even more the second time too, I felt even freer. Um, How did you feel through your pregnancy? I wanted to feel all of <laughs> I really wanted to. Um, I really didn't love being pregnant and it was really hard for me to talk about. Why? I, felt, yeah. I felt like there were so many, um, I had so many friends. I had family members who had all really struggled to get pregnant or had fertility issues or loss. And I felt um, I like I couldn't say anything negative about being pregnant. I felt, of course, so lucky and grateful to be pregnant. But I felt like if I said anything negative, it was as if I wasn't grateful. Um, Mm -hmm. But the more I talked about it openly, I felt like a lot of women were like, oh, this is, this is what I'm going through or what I went through. And it's nice to know that like, you're grateful, of course, but that you're struggling with it. I I think it brought up some challenges for me. Um, I almost felt like some of those same thoughts I felt like in my early twenties that I felt like I had already resolved about my body were coming up for me again. And so I was frustrated because I was like, I've done the work. I am at home in my body. Why am I feeling this way about some of these changes? Like I, of course I'm growing and changing. I'm growing a human. Um, But I think, you know, it's not like if you've gone through body image issues, it's not like it it goes away overnight and some things can be triggering and some things do come up. And so they, they come up for me, you know, every day, but I think it's the difference is now I know how to handle that internal dialogue and Mm -hmm. and wash that. Like, I know that that conversation, that person or that, you know, that thought that's coming in, isn't me. It's just maybe a story I need external. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it just, you know, I went back to my toolbox and and had to just do a little bit more work internally, um, as those conversations and feelings came up. Um, but I did, I did struggle a little bit through it and postpartum was a lot more challenging than I thought as well. Like postpartum was, whoo, you know, those first three, four or five months, I mean, up to a year, you know, um, you're going through not only an emotional change becoming a mother, but your your body has just gone through such a, 
a transition. And so I was, as someone who stayed very active throughout my pregnancy, still was very um, taken aback by, by that postpartum experience. And so uh, it brings up so much stuff. And I love that you actually point that, that we, it's not always the most enjoyable experience. And I think that, you know, even though I kind of like love the changes my body went through, I didn't love every part of the pregnancy yeah. for sure. And then the second time around at like 40 years old, and now we're thinking like, will we do it again? I'm like, Oh God. <laughs> but <laughs> so I think we can all at least feel you at least a little bit on that kind yeah. of stuff. Um, but how did your workouts change or yeah. did you have to edit them being pregnant? I did. And I will say, I think part of what got me through and got me into a positive groove throughout my pregnancy was building out my pre and postnatal program, because I felt like, you know, for someone that was really active and wanted to get in an athletic workout while they were pregnant, there wasn't a lot out there. No. You know, there was a lot of prenatal yoga and very gentle workouts, which by the way is, is great. But if you are someone that is looking for something challenging while you are working out, there wasn't a really big, robust program to take you through all trimesters. And so getting to film that while I was pregnant and go through that journey with my community was amazing. You know, you see my body changing. I also filmed in my postpartum program, I'm like, you know, weeks out of, of delivery, doing my pelvic floor videos. And, you know, I think it's really nice. What I loved about that is getting to share that with other women going through it physically, because I think when you see another fitness instructor with like a six pack abs doing pelvic floor and postnatal work, you're like, girlfriend, like, this is not what a postpartum body looks like. And that was us, I feel like. it. You know, before all of this, too, like, you know, I'm guilty of that, too, because I had trained pre and postnatal under a doula, thought I knew so much. But until you go through it, you just don't know. And so yeah. that you really can connect then with these women because you're yeah. like, this I'm is just, rough. <laughs> yeah, I'm, just, I'm showing up. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm, I've am i got five hours of sleep. I'm, you know, I'm... <laughs> couple weeks postpartum, but we're doing these pelvic floor exercises and we're going to, you know, we're going to be so happy that we did them. And I can look back and now just be so, I'm so happy that I have now that offering because, you know, if you're on the Sculpt Study app with me and you're going through those different phases of life and that journey, you're, you have something for each stage. And so that really put me, um, got me really focused and um, was a really positive part of my pre and postnatal journey. When do you feel like you, I don't even want to say fully recover. They say your hormones are, it's like three years to recover, but when do you feel like you were back to your strength, your Ooh. endorphins, your, you know, all almost like mental capacity as well? I mean, I, swear, I don't know. I think some things are forever. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> um, I, feel like I still, some of my core work, I, I, I do think I can access my core in a much deeper way from my pelvic floor and 360 breathing work now that I have that understanding. So maybe that's why my core work is a little more difficult for me because mm -hmm. I'm getting deeper in there. Me too. Yeah. It's from the, I had the di diastasis recti yeah. and I feel like learning it during pregnancy. So I wasn't it, it, uh, damaging it more. Yes. Now I can really, even after all that Pilates training, like really engage and it's hard yes. <laughs> shaking. <laughs> I wish I had learned and understood that because you can do the, obviously you can do that work if you're not pregnant or postnatal. Yeah. Um, I would say probably around, I mean, the last maybe like two months I'm, I'm feeling more like myself. <laughs> I mean, that's like a long time. That's over a year. Um, I just think it's, it's taken me a lot, a long time. Yeah. It's sleep too. Well, you look at, um, not physically, but you do look amazing, but like you look amazing on all your workouts in the sense of your energy and like, you know, just being there with the community and all of that. And then everything that you've been up to, you're do, you've been doing live classes again. And yeah. I mean, that was so terrific to see people show up all over the United States and do that kind of stuff. How amazing was that for you? Oh, you know, my community is everything. Like really like what I am doing is built around them. And so just getting to 
see them, meet them. You know, I know so many of them through Instagram and DMs. And so to get to meet them in person and move with them has been just so special. Um, and so, yeah, the more I can do pop-ups around the country, um, it always just re-energizes me and refocuses me and just reminds me that like the workouts I'm filming in my kitchen, people are watching them and they're doing them and they're making a difference. And sometimes you, you don't, you forget that a little bit when you're in work mode. And so, um, just getting to reconnect with the community in real life has been amazing. Well, for 2023 and all these, you know, the TSS community and people that are just joining and following you, do you have any extra tips to just have their their healthiest, best well-being year yet? Yeah, I think it goes back to what I was saying before. I think commit to less so that you can show up more. I think it's overwhelming in January. We're setting all of these big goals. Take your goals back a little bit. Be really... Re- be really real, realist. Oh my gosh, I can't speak. Be really realistic. <laughs> we have little kids, no sleep. Yeah. <laughs> realistic about your journey and what you can commit to. And so I would, again, so much rather you start small and start with short workouts and be really consistent with that and build upon it. And I would also say finding a workout that you really enjoy, that gives you energy that you look forward to is so important. So make time for that. Try different workouts, try the Sculpt Society, see if it's for you. Because I'm telling you, once you've found a way of moving your body that feels joyful and fun, it's going to be such a game changer in your trajectory, in your journey with fitness and your relationship with movement. I love that. And you guys, we can find the Sculpt Society at thesculptsociety.com. Her Instagram is at Megan Roop and at the Sculpt Society. We have a code for you today too. So that makes it really easy. Get on it. It's KISS25, K-I-S-S 25 for a seven-day free trial and 25% off the first month too. So you get to try it out. But I know that you're going to love it. I've been a member for for a really long time. Um, We have a couple uh, like little quickie questions at the end. So what is your morning routine like with a child? You know, I have to patience for myself, but honestly, if I can get like two of these, like this list in, I'm, I feel good. It's usually lemon water, coffee. If I can get outside and drink my coffee, amazing. If I can meditate and journal, like gold star for the day, but it's usually lemon water and coffee. (laughs) We're down with it. I mean, goodness, something for you and something for you for the rest of the day, the coffee too. I know I'm trying to, um, in the new year as well, get back to my meditation through this third child. I feel like I've lost it. And just those little days, even if it's later in the day, cause I loved it in the morning. I just feel so much more grounded and things seem to flow a bit more. Totally. So is there, I hate the word resolution, but you know, we're all constantly evolving and kind of editing to improve upon ourselves. Is there anything that you're trying to improve upon yourself this year? One, one, two things. Yeah, I'm trying to be softer with myself. I'm I'm pretty hard and um, goal oriented, and I think I think I'd, I'd love to soften a little this year. Just enjoy where you're at. Yeah, and you should because the Sculpt Society is amazing, and your girls, your TSS community, they absolutely love you. You've been pumping out the workouts since 2019 and pre, but you know, for the community and just you have a new app actually, so you guys. Ooh. Tell us a little bit about the new app. This has been a a year in the making. This has been so important to us as we listen to the community and what they've wanted. So um, we have a new, you can schedule in a workout. You can literally say, I want to work out tomorrow, this video, schedule in the And do a push notification an hour before your scheduled workout to remind you. It will tell you if you did it or not. Um, We have a filtering system. You can literally filter by trainer, time frame, equipment, all of the things, um, which is pretty major. We can check off workouts complete. We can create our own workout playlist. So your favorite workouts, or maybe you want to do three workouts back to back, they'll play sequentially. All of these little things that I think just making getting in movement more consistently easier, which is so I love this, Megan. It's like, that's one of my biggest tips I always say too. It's just like, you have to schedule your workout like you would schedule anything else in your calendar. And if you skip it one time, then whatever, but you're really going to skip it if it's not in there and you're like, I'll do it here. That enables you to really 
count, yeah. keep yourself accountable for it because it's going to show you if you don't do it too. I so that love that. Like, red, like check. Like, yeah. Oh, I didn't do it. That's like really annoying to a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> the type A, be softer with yourself, Megan. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel you on that too. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us, Megan. And I hope you have the best new year. And I can't wait to see you on the Sculpt Society. Thank you for having me. This is so fun. <laughs> Have a great one, everybody. And I'll see you guys on the Sculpt Society too. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and feel free to share this with a friend or family who needs to hear it. Have questions you need answered? Text me at 1-310-361-8697. Make sure you're following me on social at Christine Bullock and have a healthy, happy week. See you next time.